Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Uh, obviously not updating to 0.24 just yet, uh, well not in this save ever because pretty much every mod says this update will break your save game so I'll take their word for it and um, we will continue in here in 23.5 and and last time we brought this return vehicle over and it just occurs to me that with this thing sticking out like this there's no way that the pod can dock to it very well I, I guess it does have some clearance yeah I guess it would be able to anyway so what we need to do is bring bring our Kerbinaut over to the moon have him land on the moon and then bring him back up to this transfer him to this and then he will be able to use this to return back home that is the plan and I was originally intending to do all of this during the Apollo 11 celebration week if you will uh, but of course I also have my Apollo 11 tribute mission and uh, instead of being able to do both in tandem I definitely did not have enough time for that so ended up having to delay this entire series while that was going on but this time we can now turn back to the VAB and see if we can't put together our mission to uh, bring a Kerbal over to the moon, land him on the moon and then bring him safely back to Earth. Alright so let's go to the VAB. Now we didn't technically have a successful test of the lander prototype however I think I got enough information so that we can try and do do the actual mission now and I did the obvious edits the ones that I had outlined already um, and basically replaced the uh, alcohol container if you will with an actual pod as you can see I had a life support and well there were uh, no uh, just just for your information there's an inline reaction wheel tucked in here so that's being hidden by the docking port but uh, obviously we need the docking port we've got these uh, set to MMH N204 this has a little bit of MMH in here so uh, hopefully that'll be enough to allow this to dock with the return vehicle otherwise this stage is a little bit heavier and that was allowed for by the fact that I've removed the ablative shielding here as well as the decoupler because there's no reason why this needs to decouple from this tank anymore so uh, so we save that mass we also save the mass of the parachutes of course this pod doesn't need parachutes anymore so all of that mass was saved and uh, hopefully that'll all be enough to allow this to reach reach the um, return vehicle this is the ascent stage, descent stage. Descent stage is reading 1,960 meters per second of uh, delta V, which uh, may or may not be enough, honestly. Uh, the I can tell you the Apollo descent module definitely had much more than that, but we are relying on some of the delta V on this stage to uh, get us down. So actually this stage will be decelerating us quite a lot. Uh, well hopefully quite a lot and so I'm relying on that I'm not putting a fairing around this and that's partly because well aerodynamically it's actually uh, okay as far as things are concerned and also I don't want to add the extra mass one thing I do want to do is obviously this is a flat surface and that's no good so let me just do one more thing and that's to add the oh no not like that Oh darn, it's embedded in it. Eek. Okay, well, we'll just have to replace that. Yeah, so some sort of uh, not, uh, not an escape system. Obviously, if we were working in real conditions where things failed, that would be a different story, and we would have to make a escape. What the heck just happened to my stages when I just tapped that? What is what? What? How how does this stage now have seven thousand? That's not right. What? These all have. Uh, how much is this? Oh, I hesitate to do this, but okay. 
That doesn't even work. Where did it get 7,000 from? Honestly, well, let, let's try and add the decoupler and see if it's... Uh, okay, uh, what is... Wait a minute. Oh, crud. Everything is messed up now. Okay, tell you what, let me just uh, reopen this. This looks weird. Okay, back to what I expected it to be. Very annoying. Oh, uh, I should mention uh, Bujol, of course, going with my pattern of uh, sci-fi, technically slash fantasy writers since I added Terry Pratchett to the mix. So, uh, going with that pattern and Lois McMaster Bujol, one of my favorite sci-fi writers. And... Today I'm not uh, strong in the whole looking for parts thing. Oh, that makes me feel better anyway. Okay, but we've got uh, 7015 again up here. Uh, that's there. Okay, now it's fixed. I don't know what's up with all this. Uh, I probably need to fix some of the staging. Okay, everything looks good now. Uh, this this Delta V keeps changing on me. I have no idea. So, right now I have no idea what my Delta V on that descent stage is. And that's a little bit worrying, because that's sort of the critical stage here. Um, uh, let, let's just verify these these tanks all read full okay and this one reads full let's hope that's enough all right let's uh, bring this out to the launch pad and uh, align with our our trajectory to the moon okay so I've uh, done the necessary time warping we're under local control and that will persist throughout the mission and yes, uh, SAS is on, throttle is up. Uh, I've decided to go with Jeb because I'm much more comfortable with him in the pod seat. This deserves sort of an epic, epic sort of launch thing, but but actually I, I, I want to... <laughs> I, I, after doing quite an epic uh, Apollo 11 tribute mission, I think we should do a little bit more of a Kerbal style uh, moon launch here and just uh, be unassuming about the whole thing and try this out okay all right uh, I'm just sort of waiting for the this to stabilize a bit I'm hoping it will I guess we're all right well oh, Jeb looks fine I think uh, I think we'll go with it all right, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and lift off, lift off of the Magni launcher carrying the Bougio lander to the moon. Our major off the top, then color. The rocket has cleared the tower. Been a long time since we've had uh, Kerbal chatter. Good to hear that. So I have been uh, playing around with uh, now point two four point two. And uh, I've tried out the mods now. Uh, all the required re realism overhaul mods have been updated for it, uh, except for advanced jet engines, I think. But anyway, uh, so I've uh, tried that out, and uh, using the big 8,000 by 8,000, what was it, 8,192 or something like that, 
uh, pixel textures, the biggest textures available for a real solar system. And it looks good. And it's sort of heartening to see the RAM go right past 5.5 gig. Um, so that works. And supposedly on 24.2, uh, they corrected the right click, the, the bug with the mouse that uh, actually made me a little bit hesitant to use it at all for a while. So that's good. But uh, yeah, I'll have to see what I can do with that. Right now, there are a lot of uh, what I consider essential mods that aren't updated for it yet. So not gonna start a series just yet on it but once I do it should be quite interesting I do want to uh, see if we can get the what you got cost of the parts right for it though I don't think it's quite right just yet I, I don't know for sure though that's that's the thing don't know how that's gonna work out uh, whether we gotta be able to have a career mode with all the realism overhaul parts that could take a while to balance that All systems are nominal. So yeah, still in the old version of everything, and so food, water, and oxygen still go uh, one unit per day. And of course, in the newest update of Tag Life Support uh, with Realism Overhaul and all that, uh, that's all changed and a little bit more complicated to keep track of. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, it's just that I do have to remember that. Uh, that became a complication in the Apollo tribute because I had to actually update some parts that weren't carrying the right amount of it. So we are now past Mach 1. Really dark clouds ahead of us. serious clouds here. As you see, we have passed the area of maximum dynamic pressure. I have no idea what Jeb just said. Okay, soft fuel boosters are out. And Jib is probably noting that I should put those uh, separatrons a little bit higher on there so that uh, the separation happens a little bit more balanced. Okay, I think that's our nose cone one. Just double check. Yeah. Yep, I think we can separate that, though it's not going to go anywhere, I don't think. Oh, it did make a little bit of a pop there. Still head right back to the... to the nose. Oh, no, it's going to slide off now. Probably the separator is still sticking around. No? Oh, no, there it is. It's a bit of debris there.
So we got a few minutes. Let's take the in cockpit view. Not much of a view here. Ah, clicking on these things while we've got curb quake on is always a little bit tricky. Come on. Oh, uh, this must not have the alternate one. Okay. Ah, this doesn't have that display either. Uh, actually, um, I think the the default multifunction display with uh, with raster prop monitor is actually better than this one. So maybe I should switch back to that. Okay, first stage out. Okay. First stage separation, and the second stage is lit. I think we can go pretty flat right now. Okay, we're now flying flat and about to get into orbit soon. Aiming for about 260 by 260. Okay, a little bit late shutting it off, but 274 by 260 kilometers. And everything looks good. Relative inclination less than 0.2. Okay, I think we can separate the second stage. Alright, so now we're all nice and configured for for now, lunar transfer. Here. No, Seems to me we're probably going to have lunar transfer in the dark though. I would point to the node now. Relying on the tiny little reaction wheel at the top of the capsule because this doesn't have its RCS. I removed the RCS from it. We'll just take our time. Again, everything is about fuel efficiency and making sure the landing can go safely and that RCS was taking up a fair bit of mass that I didn't want it to. Okay, coming to the end of the long turn. This has been a major maneuver. Taking quite a while to turn this much, but at least we can do it with a minimal mass addition. I don't know whether it's good to activate the engine now or later. I, I'll activate it now. Don't know what the net effect is, but... Okay, so I'll time warp to the maneuver node now. Okay, now in the dark and do we have lights on this thing? Now we do have the landing lights but that's not giving us much here because they're splayed out instead of uh, focused in. But anyway, uh, very stable so let's not uh, waste any of the little 
solid boosters here. Though, I guess technically, well, anyway, yeah, I mean, there's the potential that we might need to make an extra burn, so don't want to waste them. Okay, maybe a little bit longer. I don't know how long exactly this burn will be, but let's go with this. Very stable still. Let's go. Ah, uh, pretty long, yeah. Gonna switch to SCS so that uh, Smart ASS doesn't uh, wander with the maneuver node. And I'll catch up with you once we are close to the end of this burn. Okay, here we are. Uh, less than one minute left in the burn. Very long burn. Not only are we still not accelerating past 1G, we are also lagging pretty badly in terms of the actual time. And not in daylight yet, though there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon there. And the trick here is to shut down at the appropriate time so that we're not too high or, well, definitely not too high above the moon. If we're crashing into it, that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. It's the part where I need to make sure that uh, we don't end up like a thousand, more than a thousand kilometers away. And that's going to be tricky, even though the acceleration isn't that high. I am glad that it's not, uh, not as high as it could be. Because that would make things even more difficult. So, yeah, let me just put my little mouse over there and hope I can read the paradoxes. Got multiple displays to look at, potentially. Don't know which one I should favor. At the bottom, there's the closest approach distance to target, which will also show me my periapsis to the moon. But I've also got the uh, remaining delta V in the maneuver node. That's also something to watch. Okay, now... Not too bad. Okay, that makes things worse. Alright, thank you. Uh, well, well, I don't want to use the RCS on this part, part so... It's a little bit high. Let me try and turn around. Let me go retrograde. And see if I can't keep this available for a burn. So far we've got seven ignitions remaining. Fuel flow very stable. If it doesn't stay very stable then I'm not going to try and correct this at all. This says closest approach distance 7.4 7,400 kilometers, but uh, perhaps that's from the center of it? I don't know. I don't know why there's a discrepancy between this and this. Right now, just uh, making sure that remains stable. And if it does, I'll, I'll be able to correct this. I want to keep the two I guess you could say forced relights here, the ones using the solid rocket boosters, the Ullage rockets. Keep those for around the moon. Almost certainly gonna need both. Just, yep, okay. So, uh, just a little burn in this direction. Okay. Like I said, crashing is fine. We'll deal with that once we get into the vicinity of the moon. 
Okay. Good deal. And six more relights left. All right, uh, are we configured for lunar transit? Uh, lights off. Everything else looks good. All right, I think we can go. Okay, lunar sphere of influence, and Jeb already wanted to give us an uh, update. Okay, fortunately already pointing in the right direction, uh, except uh, Smart ASS is trying to pull me away from that now. Okay, let's see if the engine is stable. Yes, very stable. Good, because I still think I need both of these. Alright, um, alright, I'll just keep an eye on this here. I think we better try it now. Okay, that's good enough. Just wanted it to be in five digits, and that's that's fair. Now we can go retrograde. Actually, uh, rather than going retrograde, let's focus on the moon. Plot. Oh, it looks like this will be the side that we're going down on. Okay. Oh, there it is. I was wondering where the moon was. We're going to have Jeb land immediately, and then if we can do any orbital sciences, we'll do that after he returns and reaches the return vehicle. We also need to try and hit a biome that isn't the Midlands. I have to remember that. Now we seem to be over the Midlands. Lots of Midlands to be over. Oh, there was something else there. But only for a little bit. Again, the actual look of it does not help me to identify what biome I'm over, so I am looking at this. Okay, I think we can burn four of it now. Ooh, bit of a kick there. I'm gonna pull these down now. I've also reconsidered something. Just in case I have to abort to orbit, I'm increasing the thrust on these back to 100%. Because they are going to need to handle the emergency and give me enough thrust to survive, just in case. Once we're, once we're down on the surface, I'll maybe limit them back down so that we can make a smooth little ride back up, but right now I want to be as careful as possible. Well, I'm sure getting a lot of mileage out of this uh, RL-10, RL-10B2? Yeah, RL-10B2. Gonna end up using most of its relights. It's doing a lot of the work here. Okay, worried about how the periapsis is going down there, and I don't want to replot or anything. Uh, I'll take that. 
Now, I really need to figure out where to land. Might want to make an orbit before deciding. Here, yeah, we're still over Midlands, are we? Tempted to have uh, Jeb sort of step outside and check. Oh, there's Highlands. There's Highlands here. Hmm. Crosses the orbit of the... No, that's the... That's Vern for City. I thought that was the return vehicle. Where is the return vehicle? Ah, it's an eccentric orbit. And... Crosses here. Let's see if there's something around here that we can do. Northern Basin, but I think this is... Uh, this is in the dark. It'd be really convenient if this was some other biome. I think that's Jeb telling me no such luck. Um, hmm. I saw Midland Craters over here. Oh, there's Highlands over here. It'd still be too much. Since it's our first time trying it with this situation, I'm going to try and... Uh, so, uh, yeah. I'm going to try and aim for this point here. Hopefully that will simplify things, especially since it's our apoapsis and if I do a maneuver to descend, so our first uh, descent burn, uh, was it descent orbit injection, something like that. Okay, be a little bit safe about it, but yeah, descent orbit injection, there we are. I mean, we've done other experiments at the Midlands, but we sure haven't landed a Kerbal there and taken a surface sample, so we'll at least get those. And if this uh, all turns out successful, we can be a little bit more adventurous in the future. Okay, checking the engine. Where are you, engine? Uh, there you are. Very stable still. Pretty impressive. Okay. I think this is close enough. Sure got a good kick to it. Okay. That's very good. And actually a pro grade right here will be fine. That'll end up being retrograde on the other side. Okay, here goes nothing. Very stable. But it doesn't matter, we have to fire the retro rockets here. Otherwise we're not going to be able to use them at all. Uh, the camera view is horrible. better. So, okay. Right. 
Okay, so, like I said, let's have these rockets go. Okay, and might as well go to the next one. Okay, now let's see how much Delta V is going to give me in the lander. Okay, looks good. Okay, I think we got, we can afford to wait till apoapsis. And I'm not gonna go quite suicidal on it, so I'm gonna leave a minute on the suicide burn countdown before starting. See where are we? Midlands now. Definitely no benefit to try and land here instead of over there, so let's try and get as far as possible. So a little bit of lift. Alright, let's go. Jeb's loving it, but I'm tense right now. Very, very tense. I'm sort of keeping to a vertical speed limit here. I want to make sure we're not going down so fast that I can't recover from it. So that's really determining my pitch. I'm sure we're safe now, actually. And by that, I mean in terms of we can finish killing our velocity before reaching the surface. Whether we'll have enough fuel to subsequently touch down safely is a separate matter. But we can kill our velocity. So now we're finally at the sort of velocities you'd expect for Kerbin's Moon. It took us a while to get down to these sorts of velocities, but here we are. Landscape looks really interesting. Looks like we're gonna be setting on this high patch, maybe.
probably better that way. The rest of it looks pretty rough. Yep, time to pick a landing spot. Guess over here would do. Let's just go ballistic trajectory with this for now. Looks like those tanks are empty now. Infinite ignitions on that one. Don't think the lunar module the Senate engine had infinite ignitions. Uh, the one I had from the FASA one was uh, something like 20 or so, if I recall correctly. Certainly I was uh, keeping in mind that I didn't have infinite ignitions, so it's not uh, quite so good. But uh, on this landing, we're, we're not coming anywhere close to the limit on the lunar descent engine. Hmm, got auto saving. Okay. I am being very slow and careful with Jeb right now. We've got plenty of fuel and I don't think I need to rush things. Okay, 
I took my own sweet time doing it, but Jeb is now down on the ground. But you'll notice I haven't unlocked ladders yet. At least, uh, yeah, I don't think I did, and that's why I didn't put one on. So, I think I'm going to call an episode today because I don't want to try and use his jetpack and fling him all about after just having conducted that landing. I will do a crew report and we will uh, keep that data. Only 20 science unfortunately, but we've got plenty more science to do. And we'll take care of that in the next episode where I hope to do all that science and also bring Jeb back up to the return vehicle. And then we'll see what science we can do in orbit and whether we can get back in the next episode. I'll have to take a look at that. But it's been a long episode and we have done what we set out to do. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.